All right. So here we are on a Friday afternoon, getting ready for the weekend. And it is the conclusion of our time management challenge week. And I'm here with my friend and also a time management expert, Sarah Frances Goody. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Angela. So great to be doing this with you of our first kind of shared live in this format. So it's super fun to give this a try today. Yeah, this has been an interesting process. I, I don't know about you, but I kind of found my way to time management just because I always felt like I had so much on my plate. And no matter what I tried, it never really brought me that effortless ease. I felt like I was still always on the hamster wheel. Well, me too. I have to say, I mean, I used to not so much now, but I used to spend my Saturdays reading about productivity and time management and mindset and all of these things um, because I, I was in an executive assistant job at the time and I was really trying to manage a lot of stuff in a high paced environment. And so, I, yeah, I spent my weekends reading about it and I still do more, but it's more actually listening to audiobooks on time management and productivity. And I know not everybody loves this topic. So, for those of us, Angela, I know you've written your Time Builder book, which is amazing. Um, so you've actually written a book on productivity and time management. So uh, for those of you out there that aren't experts in this field, we are happy to share some of our tips and things that we've learned along the way. Yeah, and I know coming from the world of being an architect, I think a lot of creative professions are like this. You never really know when you're done. There's no quote unquote right answer. And so as a result, you can iterate, iterate, iterate and be a real perfectionist all the time. So we come from this kind of broken culture where from our college days in studio, you're encouraged to pull an all nighter. Being exhausted, overwhelmed is almost worn like a badge of honor, but it really isn't. That's a good point. And I I, I think you and I know very well that being in that burnout state or survive mode state, you're not at your best and you definitely can't be creative, let alone productive and get things done. Um, but it is, I think there is sort of this expectation that I know I grew up with this concept of you have to work hard to be of value, you know, and I still mm. appreciate that. But um, I found ways to do it in a way that it isn't to the point where I'm leaving myself in burnout all the time. Yeah, because I think, you know, you definitely, when you study the stress response, we know that adrenaline and cortisol get released when we're stressed out and our body can actually get addicted to those chemicals. So then we kind of need that stress to motivate us anymore because we are so exhausted that we don't feel inspired otherwise. So it becomes this vicious cycle when we don't take care of ourselves. Interesting. I've never really heard it put that way, Angela, that people can get addicted to that stress response. But I've known many people over the years that say they only get something done when it's a crisis. You know, it's due tomorrow or in an hour or or something like that. And that that's the only the time when they feel like they can get, I think, that boost of adrenaline to, to get things done. So how do we switch then out of that and kind of heal that way of being into this new way that maybe many don't even know is possible. Yeah. So definitely you have to be able to make the time for self-care, right? And so we, we kind of glamorize being exhausted and having this I'm fine culture, but then at the same time, we're too busy to take care of ourselves we're too busy to do what we really love. Instead, we're spending our time just ticking boxes, doing the chore kind of work. And I always like to say, you know, it's kind of like the story of Cinderella, where she just has to do this list of chores to be able to go to the ball, except the list never ends. And we do this to ourselves. So I think step one is we've got to realize that we're doing that. We have to say, why am I not doing more of what I love every day? And why is my day more filled with the things I have to do versus the things I want to do? And if I, my answer is I'm too busy, that's how we know that we have a problem. And it starts with asking better questions 
about how we're spending our time and why we're saying yes to things that aren't a yes for us and no to the things we really want to do. That's huge. So just to kind of paraphrase um, for those that are listening, Angela, you said basically that whole I'm too busy to do the self-care is a good red flag to say, hey, maybe it's time to pull back and switch it up. I know for me, um, if I'm ever running late for things or I've missed a deadline or if I stub my toe or, you know, I'm chopping veggies and I, I cut myself, which happens very rarely, but those kind of like almost physical um, flags are, are reminders for me to kind of say, Oh, it looks like I'm obviously, you know, under more stress than I think I am, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of helps me remember to kind of dial back. And what you're saying earlier, Angela, also reminds me of a quote, and I don't remember the quote exactly, but it basically said, if you're stressed, then you need to, or you're anxious, it's t- you need to play more, you need to have fun more and, and really get into that fun activity like you're describing. Yeah. And yeah, we don't give ourselves permission. You know, when we when we most need to rest or take a break or have fun is when we are trying to drag ourselves across the finish line and multitask and not get enough rest because somehow we think that's actually going to make us more productive, but it doesn't. And I've run into that personally and also with the people that I've helped over the years of this sort of feeling of obligation, right? And and I think that's, we need that in work. We you know we're, we're loyal to the company that we work for. We're helping our teams out if maybe they have something going on in their personal life or physically or whatever, where you're maybe taking on more of their work than you would otherwise, or you're really trying to mentor and develop your teams. Um, but, but I think the challenge is where that line Where's that healthy line of helping and contributing and being, you know, dedicated to work and then compared to um, going too far? Right, right. And it it goes back to that need to overproduce, right? And overperform because it's conditioned into us versus letting somebody else do the work. And no, they're not going to do it the way you would do it, but they might do it better. And it frees you up to do things that are truly the highest and best use of your time. And so that, I think, comes into the more of a leadership role or even just, you know, delegating grocery shopping, for example, that kind of thing, Uh, taking time to say, well, where is my expertise best used versus, you know, doing maybe these mundane tasks perhaps we can delegate them to somebody on our staff that then would see it as an opportunity for growth. They can kind of step into their genius. I think that's what you're suggesting. Hey, Angela. Absolutely. And I think a lot of the time there's this false choice about what we think we have to do and what we allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to do. And, you know, especially with women, a lot of the time there's pressure to cut back on work hours and kind of step back professionally because you want to be the mother they show on TV, (laughs) which isn't even a real person, right? It's a caricature. And I always kind of say, you know, what do you want your kids to get to see you do? Do, you know, you would certainly tell your kids, I want you to do well in school so you can do whatever you want in your life. I want you to have a career that's fulfilling. I want you to be happy. But are we modeling that for our kids? And that was what was the real wake up call for me personally was that I had my kids buying me all this stress release stuff for my birthday and they were kind of worried about me. And I thought, oh my gosh, like I want them to think that you can have a career and that work is fun. And instead they're getting this message that to be successful, you have to work really, really hard. Well, if that's true, why would I want to be successful, right? You're, you're going to say, I'm good here, down here. I'm not going to push myself because success isn't worth it. Yeah. And I run into that with many, even of my friends and clients over the years that they don't want to progress in their careers because they feel like the next step, you know, they, they can't have a balanced life where they're going to have to work longer hours and they're barely, you know, keeping up with what they have to do now. And, and I think it's a mindset switch and a culture shift 
that we need to lead the change on to say just because we're in more senior roles doesn't mean we necessarily have to be available 24 seven. I've worked with a variety of senior leaders over the years and some they they had their time where they went and played hockey or they went to their their kids baseball games or they had their you know the personal times and they committed to it and 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 I've seen others that didn't and they let that kind of door open all the time concept which came from a feeling of wanting to help and being a, a great leader by being available but then they never had the time to focus on their own tasks or do you know kind of like more focused creative work and I think this is, again, the slippery slope of really recognizing that it's important for us to prioritize the white space or the focus times or the self-care. And if we don't do it, we're actually putting ourselves and our organizations back instead of forwards. Yeah, it feels counterintuitive because we're constantly told we need to work harder. But when we don't, when we have that white space, when we stop multitasking and we really focus, when we say no to more things, when we really take care of ourselves, we do more better in less time. I have a comment here, Angela. It says it's really hard to hear us all. So I'm sorry oh. about that. We're just trying our new setup. Are you on Instagram, it looks like? Yeah. So maybe you could try... Um, to turn up your volume on your end. Um, if not, what we will do is we'll have the recording available and we'll send it out uh, afterwards as well. Okay. So thank you for that yeah. feedback. I don't, I don't know if that makes it better. I have my phone on a little stand. I don't know if the little stand was maybe blocking the microphone. Is it, is it any better now? Oh, well, she can't hear it all. Can't, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, sorry guys. Thank you for trying it out. We're experimenting here. So um, let me turn my volume up, but I think it's on my end. You can hear Angela, but you can't hear Sarah. Okay. Turn my volume up on my phone. I don't know if that will help. Oh, yeah. Good. Now she can hear you. All right. So that awesome. must've been, must've been the problem. All right. But but yeah, I think good boundaries, like you were saying, Sarah, that's a big part of this. And we're so conditioned to feel like we have to say yes, because if we want to be successful, we have to, you know, be available for the things that we're being asked to do. And so how do we know what we should make a priority and when we should maybe ask different questions or different or ask for different opportunities. Well, this reminds me, Angela, of something that you shared with me in the past is if you're saying yes to something, what are you saying no to? And I think that has been a really powerful question to say, well, what am I committing to? What am I allowing here versus not? Um, and really making that more specific. I know we've shared five questions, Angela, that you recommended to help people kind of hone in on whether they're doing the right things or not. And that can really help too. Yeah. And so how many people on the call have been looking at the emails? If you have, um, type a yes in the chat. As, um, and if you haven't, you can tap the link in my profile and you can subscribe to the email list and I'll send out a, a link to all four of the uh, emails because we've been writing one a day on different themes. So Sarah wrote two and I wrote two and they are our best tips around four different themes that most people don't think about when they think time management. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just about having a good to-do list or using a planner effectively, but it's really a whole different set of skills and different way of navigating the world that's going to help you. Well, Angela, on that, that, I'm wondering if maybe if you might want to share your favorite tip of all the 20 that we shared, maybe one of yours, and then I'll share one of mine and then sure. people can dive Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And so what, what I often the best question you can ask is who else can do this and that could reply to delegating to somebody 
but it can also mean how could I outsource this? Who could I hire? How could I get support? And it can also mean how can I use my network? So rather than spend a lot of time researching something, maybe I could reach out to someone who could point me to five different great sources of information. And in 10 minutes, I have all the answers I need when I could have spent hours trying to find this. And so I think thinking more creatively about what you're taking on and spending your time doing is probably the biggest key to freeing up your time. I love that, Angela. And I, I know I can apply them myself, all of your tips in my own life, because I've gone through a phase lately where my things have changed. You know, I'm a new mom of a toddler and, and adjusting to workload and all of that. So that'll be really great. And my favorite tip that I want to share with you all, if you haven't read it already, was really around the mindset around time and really how you think about it. And whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed, I like to switch into thinking I have more than enough time to do everything I need and want to do here, even if that feels false. And I find once I think about it a few times, I remember, yes, I am capable of doing everything I need to do. I do have strategies to make it work. And it switches then how I choose to show up. Mm. And that can really enable those questions that Angela's talking about to say, okay, well, if I do have enough time, how can I be creative, like you're saying, to really make this work in a better way? And sometimes it means doing something differently at a different time, or maybe you don't need to do as much as you're trying to do. And I think that's the biggest thing as well, is to really pick one, two, maybe three things, do those really well, and then let the little things happen if you have extra time. Yeah. And, and feeling good about that. It's very easy to beat yourself up at the end of the day for all the things you didn't do instead of appreciating where you made progress. And then you can keep the momentum going. Absolutely. And that maybe taps into another mindset piece that I came across recently about the idea that you're not behind even if it feels like there's a mountain of things you need to do and uh, recognizing that you're working hard and just maybe focusing on the right priorities will help you make progress. Yeah, for sure. And I know we also wanted to share with everyone ways you can work with us more because Sarah and I are both coaches. We both help professionals in their careers and we wanted to make you aware of some things that we're doing. So if you enjoyed this little time management challenge, if you're enjoying the things that we're saying now, definitely can work further with us and go a lot deeper. So Sarah, you're offering an intensive coaching program coming up. That's right. So I'd love to talk about that. Thank you, Angela. So it's my transformational leader coaching intensive. And I've put this together because I know there are people out there that want quick a deep support, and then they can just move on with the plan. And so the idea is it would be a 90 minute coaching session where we would dive deep on your topics, we could come up with time management, kind of plan for you, or we could dive into any topic that you have on the leadership side. I'm a leadership coach, I don't think I mentioned that yet, for those that don't know me. Um, and I've been coaching for almost 10 years. And so I found that the mindset piece for me is my, my biggest sort of differentiator that I find working from the inside out makes a difference. So I would love to support you if you're looking for some one-to-one -one time, talk about these topics or other things, and I'll uh, share the link afterwards. And I am launching my Stressless Success Academy course for the spring, summer edition. Um, this is a two-month course. There's eight modules. And we really work on defining success in your terms. So it isn't just about modeling what you see your boss doing or a, a colleague of yours or friend of yours doing. It's really about getting in touch with what you want to do. And I always find from that place of clarity, you can make better decisions. So we talk about how to prioritize yourself and your dreams and that self-care isn't selfish. That's kind of the first module. But then we look at things like 
how are you spending your day? Because most people probably spend their day, if they're lucky, doing about 85% of the chore based have to do obligation related kind of work and maybe 15% of things that are fueling their success and really building their expertise, et cetera. There are ways you can add just 10% more of that to your day and think of how much momentum you would build if you just spent an hour and a half every day doing more of what you love building a skill set, working towards a goal. So that's another thing that we focus on a lot. We look at the things that are distracting us. We look at the ways to kind of leverage the way our brain works to get more done because our brain works like a search engine. And so if we're clear about what we're putting in, our subconscious mind, which is actually 95% of our brain, can do some of this work for us and it helps with inspiration. So we talk about things like that and it's just a really fun course. It comes with a workbook and the workbook has fun exercises in it, not hard things that really help you get clarity. And then every week there is a call and we record the call. And then there's also a set of meditations because like Sarah was saying, a lot of this is mindset. So there's a meditation that helps you get in the mindset of each of the topics over the eight weeks. So you get all of that. And it's it's a really fun course. Um, people who've done it with me really enjoy this opportunity to get a lot more clear, not only on what they want, but on how they're showing up in the world and how they're making time for themselves. So you'll see how all this time management stuff is really deeply expanded in the course. And right now, there's also a couple of really cool bonuses that you get. So I have been doing this interview series called Wellness for the Working World. And I'm up to seven now experts in different topics. So I have a sleep expert, a nutritionist, an EFT tapping person, um, anger management, hypnotherapy, all these really cool people. And there are hour long interviews with each of them. And so you get that. And once you have it, as I do more, you just get access to the new interviews as they come on. And then I'm also doing a networking um, tips. So you'll get that as a bonus too, because like I was saying before, leveraging your network to help you save time by knowing the right places to go to get the information you need or the right partnerships to forge is really powerful in building your success. So you get those two bonuses through next week and, and then they go away. But I'm really excited to offer this. And um, if you're interested, you can check it out in my profile link. It's called Stressless Success. So you can learn all about it there. And I will also put a link in the comments for those on Facebook. It sounds so amazing, Angela, and I know you've given some examples of how powerful this time management piece can really impact things. I know it is in the work that I do with my clients, but what's coming to mind, Angela, is in your Time Builder book, there's a pie chart image of one of your people that you worked with on this topic. So I'm wondering if you can tell us about that, the before and the after by carving up some time differently. Sure. So in this case, one of my clients, she had two kids and the kids, like many kids, were involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. And most of her day was spent getting up, getting everybody out the door and where they needed to be, working at a frantic pace at work, eating lunch at her desk, having to scramble to get everybody where they needed to go in the evening, not enjoying family dinners, and just kind of collapsing at the end of the day, only to wake up and start all over again. So some of the things that we worked on was just how to design her day differently. So by getting up just a half hour before her family got up, she could spend 10 minutes meditating, 10 minutes reading something inspirational and 10 minutes journaling. 
to get clarity. So what a nice way to begin your day, right? Doing things that are completely for yourself, doing things that make you feel grounded and focused and things that kind of inspire you for the rest of your day. And then we talked about what was she doing during her commute? Could she listen to an ebook? What could she do to make the highest and best use of that time? And then just blocking off an hour, just one hour out of her work day that she could spend on special projects. So these passion projects that she wanted to do, whether it was doing research or working on a proposal for a speaking presentation or learning more about something. And by doing that, so it was only an hour and a half different, right? It rebalanced her day to focus on giving her momentum. Then in terms of lifestyle, she talked to her kids, said, you know, what do you really love to do? And it turns out that some of their extracurricular activities like soccer, her son was kind of indifferent and was just playing because that was what they did. They signed up for soccer every spring and every fall. And they were able to cut that out because he didn't even really want to do it. So, you know, really talking to your kids about what extracurricular things are meaningful to them and which ones aren't and not volunteering for everything just because somebody's asking for help, you get to say no. So by doing that, it freed up their evenings and their weekends so much more so that there was more quality time to be together as a family. So these are really doable things. This isn't like rework your whole day and all, and it feels hard and awful and everybody you know is feeling like you're not paying attention to them. These are just little tweaks, but they really add up and have a big impact. They do. And I've had the same thing, Angela, with the clients that I work with. The first thing that we do is we use my inside out scheduling strategy. If you're interested, you can find it on my Facebook page or uh, in the bio on Instagram. And the idea around that is similar, what you're saying, Angela, to prioritize the self-care first. And so one of the clients that I worked with years ago when I first started using this practice and I use it since is she put a walking practice in her mornings. That's it. But the walking started giving her the brain space to think about the things she had in her day, gave her the energy and the confidence to work on things. She was having challenges within her staff team after doing some uh, layoffs within the organization. So she had to rebuild trust. But once she got through those pieces, within a matter of a couple months, she had extra time to be able to finally get that strategic outreach project that she was working on or not working on, but had on her to-do list for, for months. And in this was a not-for-profit organization. And that meant they had more fundraising. They had better research relationships within the region as a regional director. It was a huge impact, but she wasn't able to get to that level of production because she was running on barely enough. So I'd just like to share that as an example of how powerful these small changes can really make incremental results. You're always going to have to do the dishes, right? You know, the bed's not going to make itself. There are going to be things you have to do at work that don't light you up, but it's just getting more of your time where you want to spend it. And that little shift does add up to be a real game changer over time. And the great thing is it does it without exhausting you or adding more onto your plate. Exactly. So I would invite those of you listening either live here now, great to have you here or on the recording to share in the comments, what's one tip that you're going to take from this week and apply. So you don't have to do all 20. If you did, that would be amazing. <laughs> but Just one tip and one thing that you're committing to, to really show up differently with how you're managing your time. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that idea, Sarah, of just picking one out of the 20 that we've given and working on that. And then you can, when you feel comfortable, you can add one more because it really is incremental. I don't want anyone to think that Sarah and I are perfect and we just have been doing all of these things our entire careers because we haven't. We've learned the hard way. 
<laughs> and it's taken me years to get to the point where I use most, but not all of these on a semi-regular basis, right? And it's tools in a toolbox, but definitely something that you, it's like a muscle, you have to build it up. Absolutely. And I found another thing, Angela, that works with me is my life changes, different job, different life phase, winter to summer, how I approach, how I manage my time is different. So I think having this refresh like we've done this week has been great even just for me to kind of get re-inspired again. So really hoping that it has brought a lot of value to all of you as well. Yeah, Leland yeah. says, I am going to look at recording my time and picking one or two places I can tweak. Excellent. Yeah. And start delegating. That is a great first step. And let us know how you do with that. We definitely want to hear how it's working for you. That's super exciting. Thank you for sharing because it, it is something that doesn't have to be a huge thing. Don't do 10,000 changes at once. Do one, like Angela said, and then add them in as you have more capacity. That's so exciting. So Angela, you're going to be sharing your links for your course or they're already there if people are interested. Yeah, so if you yeah. were on Instagram and you go to my profile link, you'll see Stressless Success. So that is the course. And then for those listening on Facebook, I will put the links in the comments to both courses your coaching program and stressless success. So people can check them out. And as much as we love sharing all these tips with you and we love interacting with you, I will say in my own experience, working with a coach, taking classes, that has just helped me make quantum leaps with this stuff because you can learn something, you can know it, but implementing it can get sticky. And when you work with a coach or you're in a class, you have some accountability. And that accountability often is what makes you stop the procrastination or make that little bit of extra effort because you know you have to show up the next time you are meeting either in your class or with your coach and they're going to want to know how you're doing so that alone is enough to maybe make you do things you wouldn't do if it was just on your own and up to you and life will get in the way just like it is right now absolutely i, I found that's the same for me with coaching or with my pilates I can do Pilates at home, but I don't as well as when I go and, and meet with my instructor. So thank you for that encouragement, Angela. And of course, that's why we're here today. Angela and I are here to share because we're passionate about this topic, but also because we do want to be here to support you if you're struggling in any of these areas here. Either one of us or both of us would love to cheer you on, give you personalized support. And Angela's course has tons of content, as you've heard, uh, to really um, support you further on this. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who has joined us today. We have a new person on the line and we're we're just wrapping up, but thank you for joining us. Um, we would like to hear though from anyone before we close out, if you have any questions for us about time management. If there's anything you're really struggling with and you'd like um, a little bit of insight into what's going on and anything you want to maybe get help with. Yeah, that's a great idea, Angela. So you have both of us here available uh, to answer. If somebody has a quick question, you want to pop it in the chat and then we can do that. I know for me, it, one thing has been changing is the summertime. So in the meantime, maybe we can use that as an example. Angela, I've been struggling with getting out and walking and prioritizing my self-care that way. So we can maybe use that as a kind of an example. Maybe it's relevant for others. Sure. I know the more tired I am, like I don't even want to eat dinner. You know, I come home and I'm just like, I just want to, you know, chill out and then I fall asleep. So I know I'm in trouble when I wake up at midnight still dressed because I was just going to lie down for. <laughs> so I am so over architecture says it is a lifelong hope to improve time management for me. Yeah, I, I think that 
some of it. And I love your handle. I'm so over architecture because a lot of what people struggle with is the standard of perfection. This thing we were talking about earlier of overperforming and over iterating and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And um, a, a lot of what we cover in the stressless success course is how to move past the overperforming so that you're doing things that are the highest and best use of your time instead of just questioning yourself all the time and feeling like you have to do everything and taking on more than you need to, or sometimes I think even feeling guilty or feeling wrong if somebody doesn't like what you're doing and feeling like it's personal. So then you are even harder on yourself afterwards. So that self-confidence piece and that breaking out of that codependency of feeling like if the other people being happy matters more than you being happy, setting reasonable expectations, all of that is a big part of being successful with time management. That's huge, Angela. And I think that's the beginning, right? If you can move through that, then you can show up using time that serves you, but still has the positive impact you want to have. And one tip that I'd suggest with um, for you to consider as well for you, I'm so over architecture today, as to look at doing things in many steps. So a teeny tiny little piece of the bigger picture, you can still get things done in a small time of um, time window, I guess. And then the other thing I like to do is to think ahead. So if I know on Monday morning, I'm going to be doing a certain task, I let my subconscious and kind of act rest times uh, give me opportunity to kind of plan ahead in a way, but casually planning ahead, not actively thinking about it, but letting it come up in that active rest. And I know, Angela, you've used that kind of approach in your creativity as well. Yeah. And yeah. so that can and, really. And you're so right. School does not give us healthy habits. School teaches us really toxic habits, really, really toxic habits that we have to unlearn. I know I learned the hard way, the really hard way. My second year of architecture school, I was pulling all-nighters. I don't even like soda. And I was drinking Diet Coke like crazy to stay awake. And I had a crazy professor who would come into our studio at 2 a.m. So it just perpetuated really bad work habits. And I got sick. I, I developed chronic fatigue syndrome. And that was what finally forced me to rethink some of this stuff was my body physically couldn't do that anymore. And if I was going to finish architecture school and meet all these deadlines, I had to work smarter, not harder. So that was kind of the first, you know, thrown in the deep end with time management that I had to deal with. But yeah, yeah, and and I'm so over architecture. Yeah, you have to frame things the right way. My dad used to say to me, the task expands to the time allotted. Have you heard of that, sir? And it's true. And if we give ourselves little ta time windows, we can get some crazy magic done. So if you haven't heard of that before, the Pomodoro technique, I have a toddler who is kind of like my Pomodoro timer. She, I only get this much time now to do something. So not just small tasks, but mini tasks. So I was using an example in the things I wrote out because I just did this last weekend as we were writing the content for this was even making muffins. I can't make a batch of muffins in one sitting. I'm able to pull the ingredients out and then I'm pulled away. And so then I can come back later and put the ingredients in bowl and then I get pulled away. And so I found that that was a really good reminder of we can still get things done, but maybe for me in this phase of life anyway, it looks different than maybe it has in other times. Yeah, yeah. And and that's exactly it. You know, yeah, you do get overwhelmed by the big picture because it's like eating an elephant, right? How, where do I even start? But if you do one little thing, you can do that. And I think it's also important to talk about, you know, when you get something done, even if it's a little success, 
your body registers that as a win and you get a little hit of dopamine, a little hit of oxytocin. It's actually how video games are built. They give you these little structured wins to make you wanna keep playing because it feels good to play. Well, you can kind of treat your life that way, set up these little tasks so you have these little wins all day long and it makes you feel more engaged with what you're doing and more energized. Absolutely. I also put little boxes beside my to-do list so I can check them and cross them off. A double hit of dopamine. <laughs> Gold star, give yourself a sticker. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, this is, and we were talking about getting up extra early and that is a really great time management skill because it lets you start your day on your terms, not start your day in chaos. And that makes a big difference you feel much more grounded, much more focused, and that lasts throughout the whole day. So yeah, and I'm glad you took the um, architect quiz. That, that's a fun one. And yeah, a tumbleweed. So there's three things you could be. And you know, one of them is the slogger, the person that just drags themselves across the finish line every day. The tumbleweed is the person that feels like they have to split their attention all the time. So they're just multitasking and going from thing to thing, but never feeling like they make any progress. So that's, you know, just one more way. And you can get that on my website. You can take that quiz for free and see which, which thing is sabotaging your success. So that's a, it's a fun quiz. All right. Well, any other questions? We've really enjoyed hanging out with you today and, you know, hearing your thoughts on all this. And both of us, like I said, we're immersed in this. We live it ourselves. We keep creating content. And so hearing the things that matter to you, hearing where you're feeling challenged is just so wonderful for us to be able to then respond to that with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and we will continue to answer comments and questions for those of you that might be watching the replay later as well. Uh, Lee and uh, Von Lu, I'm not quite sure how to say your name there. She's saying uh, they're going fire to fire. And so one of the things I think that's important is even if it's busy, 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 taking time to pause. Back when we used to have telephones, uh, like on the desk. I would actually play a little game with myself and wait till the third ring to pick it up. So that meant I could finish writing that email. I could pause for a second and then pick it up. And so I know that's not really how we work now, but that kind of idea of giving yourself a moment to pause can really help as well. Even 30 to 60 seconds to take a big belly breath will bring you back into your parasympathetic nervous system and help your body kind of be more present again. So tiny little things like this can make a big difference when you start adding them all into your day. Yeah. So thanks everyone for joining us. And, you know, like Sarah said, we will keep answering questions and responding to comments. So if you come across this in your feed after we're not live, you can still interact with us. We'd love to continue this conversation and we really appreciate everyone who's been on with us. We've had a lot of fun doing this. Absolutely. Thank you, Angela, for helping us do a simultaneous feed on Facebook and Instagram. That's the first time I've done this. So thank you. And I yeah, absolutely love this topic. So if you're looking for additional support with Angela or myself or both of us, please reach out or comment below on these videos and we'll share the links there as well. Look forward to continuing this conversation. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.